Two big countries, deeply involved in a strong fight, not on the battlefield, but over something much smaller yet very powerful, the microchip. This competition, called the Chip War, began a long time ago, before any fighting, and involves China and the United States of America. But here's the interesting part. This clash doesn't only affect these two huge countries. It impacts the whole world, including all of us. So, what's the big deal? Well, these microchips, also known as semiconductors or computer chips, are like tiny electronic brains made of silicon, with millions of tiny switches called transistors. They control the flow of electricity, making chips the heart and soul of almost every device we use, from smartphones and computers to TVs and household appliances, like irons and vacuum cleaners. They are everywhere. But wait, it gets even more interesting. Even airplanes, fighter jets, and spacecraft rely on chips designed ages ago. China wants to become a major player in the chip game, which has made the U.S. anxious. The U.S. government is worried that China might misuse advanced chip technology for military purposes or other dangerous activities. To counter this, they impose strict export restrictions on valuable chips and chip-making equipment going to China. Why can't China simply produce its own chips? Well, chip production is no easy task. It's an epic journey. Creating these tiny devices involves hundreds of steps and can take up to four months from start to finish. The size of a chip varies depending on its use, but the goal remains the same, to extract maximum performance from billions of transistors hidden inside. However, there's a catch. It's a massively expensive and ever-evolving process. Setting up a chip manufacturing facility requires billions of dollars, and staying ahead in this technology race is crucial. Manufacturers who can't keep up risk being left behind. Very few manufacturers dare to enter this challenging world of chip making because of the substantial investments and the constantly changing landscape. It's like a roller coaster ride that only the bravest entrepreneurs take on. Just like any electronic gadget, cars need tiny chips to make all their cool features work. These chips are like the brains of the car, and a single vehicle can hack over a thousand of them. Imagine the chip as a superhero that senses a crash and quickly deploys the life-saving airbag. Electric cars are even more chip-hungry, requiring around 3,000 chips each, far more than regular cars. In fact, a past chip shortage caused the prices of electric cars to skyrocket. And guess what? China's chip situation affects a lot of things. If China faces restrictions on chips, it might not only impact their smartphones and gadgets, but also healthcare services, and furthermore, there's a company called TSMC from Taiwan that's the boss of all chip makers worldwide. They produce tons of chips and make an impressive $75.88 billion. Their chips power famous devices like Samsung phones and Apple products, from the MacBook Air to the iPhone 12. Many other important services also rely on TSMC's chips. However, Taiwan finds itself in a tricky situation, being essential for chips while China aims to bring it back under its rule. The tension between China and Taiwan raises concerns about what would happen to the chip industry if there was a Chinese invasion. The U.S. has a law stating it must help defend Taiwan, making it a serious matter. China's largest chip maker, SMIC, also faces challenges. While it produces some good chips, it struggles to keep up with the latest technology due to U.S. sanctions. The lack of access to special machines, such as the extreme ultraviolet lithography machine, manufactured only by ASML, causes trouble for SMIC. ASML, a company based in the Netherlands, holds a crucial position as the only one in the world capable of making the EUV machine, which helps produce computer chips in huge quantities. ASML was thriving until their product engineering manager, Zhang Chen Yu, decided to leave and start his own company. Unfortunately, things turned sour as ASML believed he stole their secrets and workers to aid his new company, allegedly with support from the Chinese government. ASML, which originally stood for Advanced Semiconductor Materials Lithography, is a multinational company from the Netherlands. They started in 1984 and focus on creating machines for photolithography, a process used to make computer chips. ASML's main headquarters is in Veldhoven, Netherlands where they conduct research, development, manufacturing, and assembly. They have a diverse workforce of over 39,000 employees from 143 different countries and work with nearly 5,000 primary suppliers. ASML serves customers worldwide 
and has more than 60 service centers spread across 16 countries. They have offices in various places, including the Netherlands, the United States, Belgium, France, Germany, Ireland, Israel, Italy, the United Kingdom, China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, and Taiwan. ASML claimed that Zongchang Yu's new company, Dongfeng Jinyuan Electromlet, had connections with another firm called Stahl Incorporated. ASML had previously sued Stahl Incorporated for stealing their technology. It turned out that both Dongfeng and Stahl were practically the same, created just a month apart by Zongchang Yu, the former ASML engineer. It's not uncommon for companies to experience theft and decide not to make it a big public issue explained F. Timmy Eds, a former U.S. Department of Defense official who monitors cases of Chinese IP theft and espionage. Many companies go to great lengths to keep such incidents confidential, not disclosing them to the public, stockholders, or investors. Despite the troubles faced by Xtel, Yu's company, Dongfang, continued to rise. In 2015, Dongfang entered into a research agreement with the Institute of Microelectronics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is the government's semiconductor research center, as per Chinese documents. During this collaboration, Yu caught the attention of Tian Chen Yi, the institute's director, and the chief scientist overseeing China's chip equipment development. Following this, Dongfang and the institute formed a joint venture to develop chip technology. Since then, Dongfang has received numerous awards and praise from the Chinese government. Even after losing the Xtel case, Chinese authorities granted Dongfang a broad patent in 2019, which includes OPC software. Additionally, last year, Dongfang proudly announced that it was nominated a little giant by China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, a designation often followed by substantial new investments and expectations of rapid growth. But the story didn't end there. Many believe China appeared eager to improve its own semiconductor industry and sought ASML's technology. Some engineers were accused of stealing ASML's critical software and sharing it with Zongcheng Yu's companies in the US and China. The United States military, guarding chip technology, took action in response to the incident. This led to restrictions on exporting chip-making machines, spare parts, and chips to China, affecting major US chip makers like Intel, Qualcomm, Micron, and NVIDIA. These companies were concerned that the trade sanctions might harm the entire chip industry. China, unhappy with the sanctions, retaliated by banning the export of chip raw materials, like gallium and germanium, which are crucial for chip making. Gallium is a soft, silver-like metal that can be easily cut with a knife. It is commonly used to create important materials in semiconductors and light emitting diodes. On the other hand, Germanium is a hard, grayish-white and brittle metalloid used in making optical fibers for transmitting light and electronic data. Both gallium and germanium are not abundant minerals and can be costly to mine or produce. This is because they are typically found as byproducts when mining more common metals like aluminum, zinc, and copper, and they are processed in countries that produce these metals. China is the leading producer of both gallium and germanium globally, with the U.S. Geological Survey reporting that China accounts for 98% of gallium production and 68% of germanium refinery production worldwide. The United States depends on China for these critical elements. In 2021, over 50% of the gallium and germanium used in the U.S. were imported from China, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Experts from Eurasia Group view China's export controls as a warning shot, aimed at countries like the United States, Japan, and the Netherlands. It serves as a reminder that China has the option to retaliate and aims to prevent these countries from imposing further restrictions on China's access to high-end chips and tools. The battle over chip-making technology escalated globally. Despite all the tension, U.S. President Joe Biden remained hopeful for improved relations with China. He didn't want to sever ties with China, but aimed to make their relationship less risky and more diversified. 